All right. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, Income Protection, Get Down to Business. Business owners make this country great and help drive the economy. Uh, most of them are going to be hardworking, love their family, and care about their employees. However, if a business owner, especially a small business owner, suffers a disability, it can drastically impact their life. A disability of a business owner not only puts his family's financial future in jeopardy, it also puts his or hers employee's financial future in jeopardy. So today we will look at solutions Assurity has for this problem and give you the tools to start having conversations with business owners about income protection or otherwise what we call disability insurance. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Seth Groff and I am the national presenter for life, disability, and critical illness. And what I like to do is I like to challenge your way of thinking. I like to share ideas that I pick up from the field and at the end of the day, help you grow sales. So after this call, if you want to reach out to me, have a conversation about how I or Assurity can help you grow your business, feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email. Um, if you're not familiar with Assurity, what you need to know is that we have been focusing on income protection or disability insurance for over 125 years. In fact, the first policy we ever issued was an accident-only DI plan. So we know the DI, the DI market. Um, we've been in this market for a long time. We're going to be here for a long time. So we're a great company to partner with to protect your client's most valuable asset, their ability to earn an income. So what we're going to take a look at today um, first, uh, we will be uh, looking at how to protect uh, not only the business owner's personal income, but also look at how to position an underserved market with the business overhead expense. Um, individual DI and BOE are a great combination for the small business owners. Um, we'll also give you some questions that you need to be asking your business clients during the sales process. We'll look at uh, some of the features and benefits that make Assurity's products ideal for this small business owner market. And finally, we'll go through what I call the money saving close, um, because if you uh, are familiar with business owners, you will know that they like to save money. And so if you can show them a strategy where you're gonna save them money, um, they're gonna see the value and the, and the services that you provide, and they're going to be more likely to work with you. So that's what we have on today's agenda, but first let's take a look at the small business market and kind of what we're targeting with the sales concepts we're going to take a look at today. Um, as you can see up there, there are 2.8 million small businesses with one to four employees. And the reason we selected that one to four employee range is because those smaller businesses, whether it's five and under or 10 and under, but just the small businesses in general, in my opinion, um, have the highest need for income protection. And the reason for that is that not only um, is that uh, the business owner is going to be more involved in the day-to-day -day operations of that particular business. So not only if something happens and they become disabled, not only will that family, that business owner's family suffer a financial hardship, but the employees uh, that work for them will as well. And so when you're talking about packaging uh, an individual DI policy with a business overhead expense, these small business owners are at, again, in my opinion, the greatest risk um, because there's more people relying on them. And in their absence, their business is probably going to suffer more than, say, a business that has like 100 employees. Um, losing one person, it's not going to be as a, a significant impact on business. Uh, but these small businesses, a loss of that key employee or that business owner is going to really impact a lot of different people. So um, we talk about business continuation and last month I talked about business continuation specifically for life insurance, but we also need to be looking at business continuation for other events. So really there's two things that this slide shows me. Um, one is that business con continuation can be in the event of a death, but it can also be in the event of a disability, a retirement, or even a divorce. So we need to be looking at some of these other events uh, that um, you can help them when developing their business continuation plan. And then also, you know, when you ask a business owner if they think about who will run their business in their absence, most of them, or as you can see on this slide, 65% have thought about what would happen in their absence. 
However, if you look at that next bar, 64% do not have a business continuation plan in place. So business continuation isn't only um, you know, in that event of the death, we also need to be looking at those other events such as disability insurance, and that's part of what we're having the conversations um, regarding today. And if you ask small business owners who they like to work with, um, I always throw this up there because uh, small business owners prefer working 52% um, with independent multi-company brokers just like you. And the reason for that is they want to make sure that you are really truly looking out in their best interest, you get them the best products to solve their specific needs, and being an independent um, uh, agent really opens up and broadens that portfolio of solutions that you can provide for them. So um, I always like to throw that out there because uh, if you look at the small business owners and who they prefer to work with, it's individuals just like you. So, you know, why should you sell income protection? And I guess, you know, if, uh, if you look at that, it helps reduce the financial stress and allows your client to focus on recovery. If that's not enough for you, uh, we have a couple of other uh, bullet points for you as well. So obviously your clients are going to need it. We're going to reinforce that today um, when we go through the sales concepts. Um, really, when you look at the DI market, especially in the small business uh, marketplace, there isn't much competition. And what I want to do right now is I'm going to throw up a survey that I would like you uh, to answer. And let's just look, and this really reinforces the lack of competition in this marketplace. I'm going to ask you about yourself and whether or not you own a personal disability insurance policy and uh, or a BOE or both or neither. So go ahead. I put a survey up on uh, the screen and go ahead and answer this if you, a small business owner, um, own any of these policies. And we'll give you a few minutes to answer it. Um, the, the, the results are coming in. All right, I am going to go ahead and close that poll. And the results that came in um, are going to be that 74% of you all voted. And the results say that 29% of the people that responded own a personal disability policy on themselves. So that's good. Only 2% own a business overhead expense policy on themselves. And 8% own both a personal DI and a, a BOE and 61% own neither. And so when I say there isn't any competition in this market, there's not even any competition really amongst ourselves because we're not even willing to go out and write this policy on ourselves. Even though we are a small business owner, um, if you're an independent agent, you're a small business owner and you're not willing to protect even your own income. Um, so that's the first step in this process is getting it on yourselves, believing on it. Um, but I think that just reinforces that the lack of competition because uh, 61 percent don't even own it on themselves so um, also you know whatever you're working with them on uh, income protection or disability insurance is going to ensure the completion of other financial objectives uh, so because remember no matter what they're working to their ability to get up and go to work is what's going to ensure they accomplish those objectives uh, also in the business market I think it's really good uh, door opener um, a lot of business owners probably have been approached about life insurance and the need for life insurance, whether it's on a key man or a buy-sell agreement. But again, as that survey just reinforced, not a lot of people are talking to them about disability and BOE, so it's a great door opener into that business market. And then also the renewal commissions. Uh, DI allows you to build up a great book of business, um, strong renewals compared to some of the life products out there. And then at the bottom line, if you have business clients, regardless of what you sold them originally, you're just going to really strengthen that relationship um, with the client and ultimately uh, it's better for them and it's better for you and it just is a um, great way to improve that relationship. So an ideal prospect, um, I know that one slide before I had uh, employees for and under, um, however sometimes the statistics don't necessarily match what you're looking for. What I always tell people, um, in, especially in this business market, we're looking for the self-employed five or fewer employees and that would really suffer a financial hardship in the event of not being able to go to work. And the reason that the smaller uh, 
that five or fewer employees remember because typically the business owner is going to be more involved in the day-to-day -day operations and so in their absence um, the business is just going to suffer a lot more than if you just look at a, a bigger company with say 100 employees a lot of times if that business owner um, leaves it might not as, suffer as big of an impact because there will be other people there to pick up the slack. So this is who we're looking for. Now that we know what we're looking for, um, how do we go out and find them? And you know, I use this prospecting slide on all of my business presentations, whether I'm talking about life or disability. Um, and you know, I say the same thing. I wish there was a silver bullet. I wish I had some brochure that you can mail out and get all the business owners to, to call you. But the reality is, and if you've been in this business for a while, you know that from a prospecting perspective, it takes work and it also don't ever put all your eggs into one basket. So if you want to work with business owners, obviously you need to network with business owners. Um, you know, so join business owner groups, whether it's chamber of commerce, uh, lead groups, executive councils, uh, Aquinas club, whatever the case might be, network with other business owners. And that's the first place to look um, from a prospecting strategy. Uh, just always remember to give value first and don't immediately go into your sales pitch because that never works out um, if you just immediately try to sell them something. Um, also, you know, if you want to focus on the business market, I always tell um, agents to network with other advisors. Uh, the best example where I've seen this work is with maybe uh, an agent that focuses on life and disability in the business market. Um, he has a relationship with maybe a property and casualty agency. Um, where that agent, you know, has the commercial lines with that business and risk really going in there and saying, hey, let's go and do some joint cases. I'm an expert with the DI and the life. Um, we'll split the case. We'll both make some money and the client's going to be better protected. And uh, we're just really going to strengthen that relationship. Um, obviously, there's a trust issue there. Um, you know, some agents don't trust other agents, so it does take time to build that trust but I've seen it work really well. And like I said, the client ends up being better protected and um, everybody makes a little bit more money. Um, also, uh, go out and uh, target a niche. If you have an in into an industry, just remember that a lot of times industries network. Uh, the example I always give is with insurance agents, right? I network with other insurance agents through NAFA. Well, other people be belong to industry organizations as well. And so they talk. And so if you can get into one industry, really understand their needs and speak their language, you're going to increase the likelihood of getting referred to other people in that industry because you're going to be seen as the expert. So remember, I wish I had a silver bullet, but I don't. And so uh, it takes work and don't always put your eggs into one strategy. Try to work a couple different angles um, and you, it'll pay off in the long run. So when we talk about business owners and events that they need to consider, um, I always throw this slide up here because when, normally we're always talking about life insurance, but they also need to be concerned about disability. They need to be concerned about divorce. They need to be concerned about retirement. These are all topics that you can have conversations um, with business owners so that if they have one part in the place, like they say, I don't need any life insurance. Well, what, have you ever thought about uh, disability and what would happen in, in the event of a disability, both for your own family and your employees? Um, so this just gives you a couple of different ways to pivot. And obviously today we're really looking at income protection in the form of individual DI and also business overhead expense. So just a couple of uh, questions to get the uh, conversation started with the business owner. Uh, you know, ultimately you have to help them realize that their most valuable asset is their ability to earn an income. And everything they built in their small business is the fact that they can get up and go to work. And so if something were to happen to them, if, if unfortunately they suffered a, a disability, um, you know, what would happen to their business? What would happen to their income? Um, so obviously, you know, ask the question, how would you pay your personal expenses? Because if he's not there, he's not generating revenue, um, the business suffers, his personal uh, amount of money that he can take home suffers. So first ask how he's going to pay for his uh, personal expenses. Then tie into the business, okay? Um, you know, how will the business continue? Will the business continue? And who will con control the business? Are there employees there that are going to be able to keep the business moving forward? Or is there going to be a lack in leadership with that business owner um, out of the picture? Uh, then how are the expenses going to get paid at the business, right? Is the lights going to stay on? Are they going to be able to make payroll? Um, you know, really focus on those expenses and how those are going to be paid. 
and then what happens to the clients, right? If the business is an opening due to uh, the business owner being disabled, where are the clients going to go? Are they going to wait? Are they going to go to the competitor? Um, are the business going to have to turn them away? And so these are just some real basic questions that you need to ask uh, the business owner to get them thinking about uh, the importance of protecting their income, um, both with Century Plus and then also protecting their business side with the BOE product or business overhead expense. So here's just a little uh, napkin presentation that we like to use. Um, a lot of times you maybe you've sat in on a, a DI presentation and seen a, I guess, a, a similar presentation. But what I like to do is just on a napkin or on a legal pad, write down these five items. So their employees, assuming that they have employees, uh, their office building, their office equipment, their retirement account, and their income. And then have them rate them um, which asset is the most important. Um, have them rate them where uh, the number one or number five, however you want to do it, uh, just rate them one to five how, how these rank. And what you're going to find out is that what they should be answering, you know, the answers will vary, but really their income and their employees should be their number one and two assets. Um, obviously, their retirement account is important, um, but really the office equipment and building, um, all that, those, the retirement, the office equipment, and their office building, all of that is based on their ability to earn an income. So if their income isn't there, those other ones aren't relevant. So obviously, that's going to be important. And then also their employees, right? Their employees are important to them because they care about them. They care about their families. They want to make sure their financial future isn't in jeopardy. And so really, that's what we're talking about protecting. Um, so they have to realize that their number one importance should be their income. And as long as you can get them to uh, realize that, it's going to make the conversation a lot easier. So um, here's what we're looking at. With the business owners, uh, they face multiple risks. And so when you're talking to them, you need to be talking about protecting their family and protecting their business. And so if they're unable to work, uh, they need protection to cover their own personal expenses, right? Their mortgage, their car, uh, their groceries, uh, their credit card debt, the, to make sure that their daughter can go to uh, dance lessons. Um, think of those personal expenses, and that's what we're going to use Century Plus for, okay? Century Plus, we write it on the business owner, and we're going to protect the family. On the other side of the equation, we're going to look at business overhead expense and using that to cover business expenses. And we'll talk about what the expenses are that we can cover with the BOE, but um, it's important to cover both because if you only write a personal DI, that money is going to go to that business owner's family and the business is going to suffer. And if you, you know, only write the BOE, then nothing is going to go to the family and the family is going to go suffer. So we need to make sure that we're writing both policies or at the very least presenting both policies so that business owner really recognizes the risk that they face and sees the importance in protecting against both the risk with an individual DI and then also with a business overhead expense. So um, don't want to get too technical into the product, but there is a couple of things that I like to point out with the Century Plus product. Um, really, your client's going to be concerned about four items. And those four items is the first one is what has to happen to receive the benefit. And I always tie that back to the definition of disability. Okay, and remember that Assurity has that great own, own occupation definition where if they're unable to do their own occupation, that's going to, uh, you know, trigger the process into filing a, a claim. So business real owners really like that own OC definition that we have in our policy. Also, they want to know how much they, are, they will receive. And obviously, that's going to be the benefit amount. What I want to point out here is that starting September 1st, we actually changed the monthly benefit amount that both our 4A and 3A, so those are going to be your more typical white collar occupations. We can actually issue 20,000 a month benefit um, for that 4A and 3A. And so we actually just increased that. Um, that's huge because that's opening up the range of incomes uh, that our DI product can support. 20,000, but we're actually bumping that up September 1st. Um, so you're, you all on the call today are actually the first ones to know, um, but that benefit amount is going to be important. Um, the client also wants to know how long they have to wait. Obviously, that's the elimination period, and then how long they will receive the benefit. Um, and that, or excuse me, how long they have to wait, 
that's the elimination period and then how long they will receive the benefit and that's going to be the benefit period. So I try to stay away from the technical terms, you know, benefit period, elimination periods, and just focus on those three things. What has to happen to receive the benefit, how much will they receive, how long do they have to wait, and how long they will receive the benefit. And for a business owner, uh, that really clears it up and makes it easier to understand instead of really throwing out there a lot of technical jargon that they're not familiar with. So when we're talking to business owners, uh, a couple of financial underwriting items that you need to be aware of. Um, you know, the, one of the challenges that we face working with business owners is a, the amount of money they actually show on their income and what they pay taxes on at the end of the year. So a lot of times, we run into this all the time, where a business owner says, well, I make 100000 uh, you know, with my business, but on, at the end of the day, when they pay their taxes, maybe they're only showing forty, fifty thousand. 50000 um, So all we can pay or all we can, you know, write the DI on is what they're paying taxes on at the end of the year. So be aware of that because that will come up in the conversation um, because they think they own, uh, you know, make a lot of money, but we're going to have to do it on what they actually are showing. Um, if they uh, are applying for monthly benefit amounts of over 2,500 uh, financial documents will be required. And if they're trying to apply for a one, two, five, or 10 year benefit period, we only need one year tax returns. Um, if you're looking at a two age 65 or a two age 67, we are going to need that two year tax return. And the good thing about our underwriting team is that if you apply for a century plus um, for a business owner and we get those tax, tax documents, um, typically we can make a BOE offer to them at that point in time. And so um, if you don't ask about it, we'll actually write it or show you an offer and so that uh, you can talk to them about that as well. Um, but this is very important because this is a little bit different than if you're just writing it on an individual uh, policy. We do look at the business owners a little bit differ different, differently. Um, with the business overhead expense product, uh, you know, a couple of things that I want to point out on, on this is that one thing we do see uh, with the BOE is we do see, um, not all the time, but sometimes we do see uh, shorter elimination periods and uh, shorter benefit periods. Um, so you can see that we only have a one or two year benefit period here. Um, we see a lot of 30 day, one year benefit periods um, just because, you know, the short elimination periods just depends on the cash flow of the business. If their, you know, cash flow is tight, you might want to look at that 30, 30 year or 30 day elimination period. Um, also with the benefit periods, you know, we're not solving it for the rest of their lives. We're just trying to buy them enough time so that they can figure out what they want to do with the business. And so we do see a lot of one year benefit periods, obviously to keep the cost down and uh, allow for that 30 year or 30 day elimination period just so that it's still affordable. So it kind of depends on the business's situation and what they're looking for, but don't be afraid to do the shorter uh, benefit period and the short elimination period if the business's uh, cash flow and needs warrant it. Um, the other thing that I do point out is that, you know, we don't have that, the occupation classes are a little bit different compared to the Century Plus. Um, so you see that there's not a 1A listed there. So, so be um, advised as, at that as well. So when you look at business overhead expenses, basically what happens with this product is it reimburses the expenses that the business um, incurs. Um, if you want the full list of, I guess, expenses that BOE will protect against, you can go out to the product guide and uh, we list all that information out there for you. But really what BOE is going to do is it, it's going to cover the employee salaries, wages, and benefits. Um, so you can put that in there. Uh, the basic utilities, whether it's laundry, janitor, office maintenance, the rent or mortgage, uh, property taxes or other fixed expenses, um, even the property and liability insurance, um, and then your office furniture and equipment. But again, um, this information is out there. Actually, I believe it's in the underwriting guide for the BOE. But just remember that the business overhead expense, what it does is it reimburses um, expenses that the business incurs. Um, so go out there, look it over, see what's eligible, see what's not eligible, and then that kind of allows you to help to determine what benefit um, they need in that business uh, for that business overhead expense. So how do we tie everybody back to a surety? And like I said, a surety likes the small business market. Um, we've made some, uh, I guess, enhancements or features into our Century Plus DI to really uh, appeal to business owners. And so we'll kind of dive into this. 
because this is really what's going to give you the competitive advantage when you're talking to these business owners. So with the Century Plus, we'll talk about the 15% business owner income enhancer. Uh, we'll talk about the business owner occupation class upgrade and then a discount if we get three or more lives. And with BOE, there's going to qualify for that business owner occupation class upgrade and a 5% discount. So with the uh, business owner income enhancer, okay, so remember that what I said earlier about how business owners, a lot of times, they don't report a lot of net income. Um, what this does is it allows us, if they're a small business owner, it allows us to uh, boost the amount um, that we look out look at when determining how much they are eligible for. So for this example, um, if they reported 40,000 of net income, um, we can increase that by 15% or 6,000. And so we're giving that business owner a little bit more uh, protection because we realize that they are deducting a lot of their expenses. So um, this is a great advantage in that small business market um, because we can you know, offer them more than just their net income with that 15% uh, boost in uh, net income. Also, look at the one occupation upgrade. This can really result in some significant savings um, for the individual. Um, you know, because going from a 2A to 3A can create some significant savings, and even going from a 3A to 4A can create some significant savings. Um, just remember that in order to qualify for this one occupation upgrade, they do need to be in the business uh, for, for three years as a business owner. They need a net income of over 30,000, 10% ownership, um, but you can see some significant savings. And um, also you become eligible for some items that you might not be eligible for if you were just a regular employee in one of these occupations. So for example, if you're in a 2A occupation, so that's your contractors, plumbers, electricians, they move to a 3A, and now they're eligible for an own occupation rider. Um, they're also eligible for those longer benefit periods. So this one occupation upgrade is huge in the small business market uh, because those business owners are going to go up an occupation class, which results in some premium savings. And then also, depending on where they start at, they might open up some of the benefits um, that they're now going to be eligible for. Um, but I always like to point out that there are occupations not eligible for the upgrade, specifically medical professions, farmers, and roofers. So keep that in mind when you're talking about the one occupation class upgrade. Uh, then the multi-lift discount, this is huge. If you can uh, write three or more policies, and we'll look at an example of this, in a small business, um, you will uh, receive the following discount. So 15% off on Century Plus DI, 5% off on the BOE. And you don't need three Century Plus or you don't need three BOE. You just need three policies between the BOE and Century Plus. So basically, if you write the business owner and you get them to purchase a, a Century Plus to protect their own personal finances and then a BOE to protect the business, all you have to do is get one more. And we're really going to show you how that money, saving them money, is, uh, is going to be in their best interest. Um, you can list bill the policies. Um, so the same employer, employee group is typically what we see, uh, but that discount is applied to all the policies and riders. And then also if someone leaves, they keep that discount. And so that's awesome. So you leave that employer, they still receive the, the discount. And, uh, you know, this can re result in some significant savings because depending on, uh, you know, how, how many policies and the cost of the policies, 15% um, can be some pretty significant savings especially if you tack it on with the savings that they get uh, by doing the occupation upgrade. So here's the case study. And this, if you can show a business owner this, uh, it kind of closes itself because you show them how much money that, that you can save them uh, with Assurity's DI policies. And so what we have here is we have a vet and uh, we ended up with $4,000 a monthly benefit. So that's $2,800 to the base and $1,200 to the SDIR rider. And we also threw on a $15,000 CI rider and a own occupation uh, rider. And we're looking at 90 day to age 65 benefit period. And so if you just went out and wrote this on a vet that didn't own their own business, the cost of it would be $148.62, okay? However, they get the occupation upgrade. So we upgrade them to a 4A. Well, that saves them $28.17. Then we list bill it. So they qualify for the discount and we save them $18.07. So just on this policy alone, we have some pretty significant savings. Uh, then we write them a BOE. 
And you can see on the BOE, this vet had some cash flow, so we only did a 90-day elimination period, but we stuck with that one-year benefit period, and we covered $5,000 of monthly uh, fixed expenses. And that normally would cost $41.49. Um, with the occupation upgrade, we saved them $4.97. And then with the multi-life discount, we saved them, because remember that BOE is only 5%, but we saved them $1.83. Then, just in order to qualify for the discount, we had him throw on uh, his uh, vet tech, which was a female, age 32, uh, smaller benefit. We only did a $1,500 a month with 750 base, 750 SDIR, IR. did throw on the CI rider, 90-day uh, elimination, 10-year benefit period, so solid policy. It only costs uh, $44.19, but again, that qualifies for the multi-life discount, and so that's $6.63. So if they didn't qualify for all those discounts by being a business owner, the total cost of that policy, or all three policies, would be $234. However, based on the uh, self-employed own upgrade, we saved them $33.14, plus on the multi-line discounts, we saved them $26.53, so that's a total of $59.67. And uh, so if you subtract that out, what they would have paid, we reduced it all the way down to $174.63. So that's some pretty significant savings, especially if you multiply that out, um, you know, for the entire year. And then if you multiply it out, you know, for the life of the business, you're, you're saving that business over some pretty significant uh, premium dollars there. So this is what how I like to present it to business owners. Um, it's just from a dollar perspective. At this is what it's going to cost. But if you go with the surety, take advantage of you know the benefits that they have in place for the business owners. We're going to result in some pretty significant uh, savings for that business owner. And ultimately, you know, you tax if you look at it uh, what, with that vet tech. Um, you know, ultimately with the discounts that paid for that vet tech's policy itself just with the discount. So. Uh, the vet tech gets some coverage, the, the vet and the business owner is, is protected, and so this is a great deal um, all across the board. Um, so with that, I just want to show you that Assurity is committed to the DI market. Um, you know, we've made some pretty significant enhancements to our, our DI portfolio um, over the course of the past couple years. Uh, you know, in 2016, we en enhanced how the residual DI rider works, or ex excuse me, residual disability income rider works. And the guaranteed insurability option rider works. Um, you know, we launched in New York in 2017 with our Century Plus DI. We've improved the non-med limits in California. Um, before there was, you had always had to do uh, medical underwriting for DI. Uh, now we, in, in you always had to do medical underwriting in California. Now we match the uh, rest of the states. Um, also, we uh, improved a lot of our uh, medical occupations. Um, from a 3A to 4A in the first quarter of this year. And then we repriced our graded benefit DI as well. And then, as I just mentioned, starting September 1st, um, those 3A and 4A occupations can actually qualify up to 20000 of monthly benefit, which just, you know, broadens that income range um, that we can protect with the surety's uh, DI portfolio. And so what I always tell people, you know, what's the surety's value proposition with DI is that if disability insurance is something you don't focus on, um, partner with Assurity because we can cover your individual DI needs with Century Plus. Uh, we can cover your business owner's needs uh, to protect their own personal income with, uh, with Century Plus. We have a great BOE product, and then we also have that graded DI product. So you don't need a partner with, uh, you know, three different DI companies. Just partner with Assurity because we can protect a wide range of occupations um, great in the blue collar, but also great in the white collar. Um, and then we can protect against uh, other risks, like with the BOE. So we're just a great company to partner with when it comes to income protection. And, you know, bottom line, protecting your client's most valuable asset, their ability to earn an income. Um, the advantages to you about learning this and talking to the business owners, you become the business owner expert. I already proved earlier, no one's out talking to these small business owners. Not no one, but you know what I mean. There's not a lot of people doing it. You're protecting two major risks, and it's also going to open you up to other employees, right? So if you get in with that business owner, maybe you get in to talk about uh, income protection to all the employees, or maybe their life insurance, or whatever the case might be. So there's huge, huge advantages to talking about it in this marketplace. So with that, that's the presentation that I have prepared for you today. Obviously, my challenge to you is to use the information. 
right? Get out, have a conversation with the business owner. Um, just show them those discounts. Uh, talk to them about their most important asset, their ability to get up and go to work, and remind them that not only would their family's financial future uh, be in jeopardy if they suffer a disability, but also their employees' financial future might be in jeopardy, and also their customers uh, might be in jeopardy if that business is not there um, because the business owner is, is disabled. So make a list. You know, you work with small businesses on a daily basis. You probably take, um, you know, you, you work with small businesses in your community. That's a great place to start prospecting. Maybe you already have business owners in your portfolio. Maybe you wrote them life insurance. Maybe you wrote them health insurance. Or if you're a property and casualty agent, maybe you wrote them um, some, some type of uh, PNC line of insurance. Bottom line, start there, make a list, go out, start using it. Um, some people will after today's call, most of you won't, but what I always say, if you don't use the information you gained today, um, you know, it wasn't, wasn't worth our time. So I'm challenging you to go out there and have conversation. Um, with that, uh, Assurity's regional sales team is here if you have any questions about your specific client. Um, but with that, I have Christy that's been answering the, the questions in the chat feature, and we have some that came through, so I'll just address them at this point in time. Uh, the first question is, will the BOE plan cover my client hiring a person to replace them? Uh, the answer to that is no, it will not. Um, remember that the BOE does not cover the business owner's um, income, first of all, and then it also will not cover uh, paying someone or, you know, paying a person to replace them. Um, so that, that is important. Um, also, can I get the multi-life discount in all, uh, on policies in all states? Um, the answer to that is no. There are a couple states where the multi-life discount is not available. Um, specifically, I believe Pennsylvania and Ohio are the two that do not allow it. So always, you know, when we do these presentations, it's on a national level, so always be sure to go in and check your state-specific information. Um, another question came in, BOE for truck drivers. Does Assurity cover truck drivers? Um, yes. Uh, we run as a 2A and we do add a one table for the rate, but we can cover uh, truck drivers for the business overhead expense, um, and that's a great market and a, a great place to start because um, they do need to cover uh, that. Um, question, do I need my health license to sell? The answer to that is yes, this is a health product, and so you do need your health license. And then uh, last one, is this, uh, is this concept good for IT businesses? Um, absolutely. Um, you know, IT businesses are great opportunity for this market. The one thing you always need to be aware of is how long have they been in um, in business because they might not be eligible for some of those upgrades and things of that nature if they haven't been in business for a long time. So if it's a startup, they've only been in business a couple months, um, no, but if they've been established and been around uh, and meet the criteria for some of those benefits, absolutely. IT is a great market for it, and uh, they, need, they need disability insurance just as much as um, – people that are uh, using their hands on a daily basis. So, looks like we have a couple more questions coming in. Uh, can DI be used uh, for a buy-sell? Um, no. Assurity's products cannot be used for, for a buy-sell. Um, there are some other carriers that have products specifically designed for that uh, buy-sell market. Um, but Assurity, the answer to that question is no. Looks like there's one more question coming in. Um, I think there's a question about underwriting. Um, the products we discussed today are all going to be underwritten on an individual basis. So this is our individual DI portfolio, and so uh, they were all underwritten on an individual basis. These are not worksite or group DI policies, and that's why we really focus on those smaller businesses, um, because if you need a guaranteed issue or a, a group policy, there are going to be, you know, um, I guess, requirements as far as how big the businesses are. All of what we talked about today are underwritten on an individual basis, and that's why that five and under market is such uh, such good. Uh, can I target other people than business owners? Absolutely. Uh, 
we just use business owners today, um, but our Assurity Century Plus is great for um, you know all occupations. We say it's best for you know middle middle income families, um, people that get up and go work on a daily basis. Uh, Assurity is typically known for the blue collar market, but we write a lot of uh, white collars as well. And now with that increase in monthly benefit amount of twenty thousand. Um, you know, we we our product serves a wide market. Um, just sometimes in these national webinars, I like to really hone in on a specific market and you know tie the tie the need back to Assurity's product um, with the enhancements for the business owners. So absolutely, um, yes, we are recorded um, for the BOE. We do need uh, income documents for for the business overhead expense. Yep, and it's going to be that one, one or two years, um, depending on the uh, benefit period. So, yep. Looks like if there's in, if uh, as far as quotes are concerned, um, you have a couple of different options. Um, one is that if you have an agent number, you can uh, log on to a SureLink and uh, run the quotes yourself. Otherwise, you can call our uh, customer connection, and they will be able to run you quotes as well. Um, the thing I will sell, and the extension there is 4264. Uh, the thing that I, that I say about uh, that and a DI quote, it's a little bit different than a life quote in that um, you do need to know what their occupation is and you need to know how much they, they make um, because otherwise we can't run the quotes without that information. And when you're looking at what their occupation is, look at what their daily duties are um, because there's some really fancy job titles out there and what it boils down to is what they're doing on a daily basis, not what they call themselves. Um, so make sure you have that. Also make sure you have what their what their their income is. So um, with that, looks like there's one more question. The question is are firefighters and police eligible? Um, yes, they are. Firefighters and police are eligible for that uh, Century Plus individual DI policy. Um, they, the Century Plus DI. Um, obviously, the BOE they're not going to be um, the owner of the the fire department, so that isn't applicable. But uh, the the individual policy is eligible. Uh, another question: BOE payments to bills, BOE payments to bills or insured. Um, it's it's going to be paid to the insured, but it is a reimbursement, so they do need to show that they incurred the expenses um, on a monthly basis to receive that. Um, so we just don't write them to check for their total. They do have to prove that they have the expenses. Um, we pay the insured, and then the insured is going to to pay that. So, yep. And we again, we did record this. We will send it out to everyone um, so that you have it. You can go back and visit it, study it, become an expert. Also, you know, from a technical aspect, go out, read the um, underwriting guide and product guide because that's really the technical information about the business owners. You know, we hit it on a high level today, but no one likes sitting through somebody reading a product guide. So go out, become an expert. The bottom line is focus on the need, right? Just I keep reinforcing that that business owner, not only is his family's financial future in jeopardy, but also the business's financial jeopardy. And so a lot of those employees rely on that business owner as well. And so you need to protect multiple risks. But with that, um, that looks like it's all the questions that we had today. Um, we will be, if there were some other questions that came in, we typically answer them after the call. I appreciate everyone jumping on today's call. Um, hopefully you found it beneficial. If you have any questions, be, be sure to either reach out to the contact center for those quotes or your regional sales team, and we'll be following up with everybody on the call as well. So thanks, and uh, good luck selling.